Hi, Jill. Hi, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing good. Doing good. Awesome. You look cute. <laughs> so do you. <laughs> Thank you. Look at your makeup right day. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> right from the pajamas. I just want to fix my camera. So Us too. Yeah. Us too. Since I thought I might be on the top of the video instead of not the bottom of the video, so now I've got to adjust a little bit. So um figure it out. Here, he's helping me so he's gonna move our camera around a little bit too perfect, perfect. so how have you been i'm doing good how's your day been not bad i'm ready to break some makeup <laughs> i already have some busted makeup <laughs> Me too. i was digging in the archives and found some stuff <laughs> That is, um, I, I think that everybody can see me. Oh, I can see your table now, Mallory. I'd come back a little bit more. No, that's good for me. I'll push it this way. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Okay, awesome. Yeah, okay. can you see me well? I think so. Okay. Everybody, hi. Hey, hey guys. guys. Yes. <laughs> so um, I'll just give a quick intro for people that have probably never seen my face before. My name is Mallory. I'm the head of marketing at Camera Ready. And we are joined with Jill Rossini today. She is the creator of the Fixie Makeup Repair Kit. And hi. Hi. <laughs> gonna break I know. It's fun. I mean, we know each other, but we've never actually done this together. So no, it's we really fun. And the, the last time I saw you in person, we were at the Makeup Show LA. And yeah. we were doing demos, people were buying these things left and right. And I think it's one of those really awesome tools that when you see it in action, you're like, I definitely need this. So <laughs> thank you. That was a really fun event. I miss being it live with people. <laughs> but anyway, this will still be fun. And then we'll, hopefully if anyone has questions, and I know you sent a list of a few that you know of, um, we can go through that too. So what are you going to work on today? Like what so I have two things. Um, the first one is actually, um, it's not even broken. It's a blush, but the plastic thing that like goes on the outside that keeps it protected broke off. So I'm going to go ahead and break this and then repot re it into the tin. And then I also have a finishing powder that's completely busted. It's a mess. So I'm going to repair that. I don't know if you could see. Oh yeah, that that's a big mess. Yeah, for sure. That'll probably go in a large one too. Huh. It'll be interesting I to see. Today yeah. I have I have a busted I'm not even gonna open the lid yet because it's such a mess in here. So I have a MAC, <laughs> a really bright green MAC eyeshadow that's really, really busted. And then I have um, a really fancy LA color. <laughs> <laughs> which is from the dollar store if you guys haven't seen these before um <laughs> that i had already busted out the other ones but i don't know if i have enough powder left in this one so i thought i'd add um another shade to it and see how it comes out so Bust. that's that's what i was going to work on and i have um i also have a busted um foundation powder if we have time i may fix that one up if not yeah awesome um, well, let's see. Which one are you going to start with? I think I'm going to start with my blush, and I'm just going to. It comes. The kit comes with these little tools, and Jill can kind of talk through as she's working what comes in the kit. But you, if you have something that you want to break apart that's not already broken, it comes with like a scraping tool and a little like pointy end, so you can basically just go into it and break it up yourself. Yeah, that's, and I recommend using the pointy end to begin with. It makes a little bit of a le uh, little less mess as you're trying to get your powders out. Now, this is really, really busted. So, I mean, for me, I can pretty much just dump a lot of it in, and then I can use the, the sharp edge to get all of all the little extra bits out. Um, and unfortunately, this one, I lost quite a bit of makeup. I think I used a good amount, and then... This busted when I was traveling. This actually might have busted going out to LA. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> to the makeup show. I actually think this was a casualty of that. <laughs> I hadn't 
few casualties too on that trip. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. It happened, right? So I don't so have Josh, that much powder, if you guys can see. I don't really have very much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in some of this blue to it also. Now, I could um, grind the green in first and then add the blue later, but I'm going to just add a little in here right now and mix it all together. So, And I see you're already grinding. I am. I'm doing a bad um, tutorial. Sorry. <laughs> no, you're all good. I'm going to show up the powder. <laughs> <laughs> Once you dump the powder in, you use this little sifting tool. So you basically just grind it down like that, and it'll turn the broken makeup into like a finely milled powder that you can repress. And Jill, one of the things that I really love about this tool is that you can get creative with it, um, and you can make different colors. You can add glitter. Um, All of it. A lot of things you can do. So you guys will see a couple of colors blended today. Um, and once I get this kind of blended, I'll see if I want to add more. Um, one of the things that's a good tip when you're um, grinding it through the screen is if it gets caught on the edges, like mine is right here, and you want to get the last little bits of it, I recommend using the little brush. And you can just push through the screen, through the sifter, all the bits so you're not um, wasting any powder. And you can also get it off of this if you want to here. And I'll just push that in. Mara, I'm following your lead. Yeah. Is anyone that joined, does anyone watching right now already own the Pixie Kit or have you used the Pixie Kit? I can kind of read from this book. It's so hard to read. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, I thought I had good eyesight until you did this, and you're like... Um, we have a yes, so someone has used it before. That's awesome. Did you find it easy to use? Okay, so I have... I can actually add a little more powder to this. I'm going to do that so I have more of a full pan. So I'm going to add more blue to my green MAC shadow. Um, and I just, I love that you can just recycle palettes that you're not necessarily using. I mean, I think like all of us, um, you buy these great palettes with, you know, a ton of colors and then there's always a couple in there that aren't your fit, right? And then they just sit in there and either you end up throwing away the palette or you um, just have these full pans of makeup. Um, what I love doing is breaking them up and creating a color that I actually like or, you know, is more suited for me. Okay, so I've got this crazy blue-green going on. Ooh, it's really pretty, actually. I think I'll show you. Oh, that's awesome. You guys can see that. I love um, that. But I'm going to actually blend it up a little bit now that you see that I've got two colors in there. And see, I'm using my brush in the bottom of the pan here. Oh, that's a nice color. Thank you, LA Colors. Yeah, beautiful blue. Yeah, fun summer blue, right? It really is. It's so Some, pigmented. Somebody right. joined, asked, what are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> We are, <laughs> thank you for joining, first of all. We are using the Fixie Makeup Repair Kit to fix our broken makeup. So Jill is working on creating a custom eyeshadow color. Um, she blended two different colors together, and then I am fixing um, one of my broken blush colors. And then in a second, I'm going to fix this powder that's completely busted. So. so I'm using, what I like to do is I like to use the tall edge of mine when I pour it in. Everybody kind of does their own stuff things. I've seen people using um, the other side of the box um, to pour their makeup in to the pan. So once it's all ground up, you pour it into your pan. Um, the kit comes with three different sizes, so it really just depends on what you're fixing. Um, and what I found, and I don't know about yours, is you kind of end up with almost twice as much powder as you thought you were going to have. Yeah. Like right. this, I'm, I can't lift it right now because it's in the tin already, but it's like right. really small. <laughs> yeah, so sometimes 
you'll have a big compact and you can actually make two out of a large one. Yeah. Um, I did that with a Becca highlighter and those highlighters are so expensive um, that I was able to make two and gave one to a friend. She was very there happy. You go. Um, so inside of the holes, there's actually a little fill line. Um, and it's, you know, it's a little hard to see because you have to get it into the light to see it, but it lets you know how much makeup you can um, put into that size pan. And if you make a mistake, you can always redo it. That's what's awesome about this. All right, there. so mine is pretty full. It's always good to level it out. So if it's not level before you press it, it's not gonna be level after you press it, unfortunately. Yeah. And you know, if you don't like the way it pressed, oh my God, my hands are so, I don't have my binder. Do you grab it? <laughs> um, it's back this way. I have an assistant. <laughs> <laughs> That's I, I can't do this without a binder and it's sitting, <laughs> in, it's sitting in the bathroom because we were just cleaning kits oh borrow yours thank you this is the binder <laughs> and then it showed up <laughs> we got a lot of questions on this um if it sanitizes the makeup um, what exactly is in it so can you just tell us a little bit about the actual binding spray um, yeah, so this is a blend. Um, it actually took me over two years to come up with the right blend. Um, it's an alcohol and a water-based silicone. Um, so the alcohol is sanitizing and it's over, um, it's over 90, it's almost 100%. So it's going to completely sanitize your makeup. And then the water-based silicone is just kind of there to give it a little extra bind. Um, okay. And it will not in any way affect the color or the texture of your makeup. So for this one, I'm going to spray it probably two or three times. You guys, you don't really need very much of this binder. And it doesn't dry the makeup out either. You may have said that, but um, we get lots of questions when we take these kits to the shows or even in our showroom. People are worried it's going to change um, like the formula or make it dry, but it doesn't at all. It doesn't. Um, and that's the, the cool thing about it is, and that's what took so long to come up with it, is a lot of the alcohols just leave your makeup with a film on it. And, ooh, that is really pretty. Um, this binder will not do that. You will not have any of that crusty film on the top of your powders when you get done pressing it. Um, Oh, oh look at that color. Let me see yours. How'd yours come out? That's beautiful. Mine is like a brand new. Look, oh my God, just... that came out so good. It came out amazing. <laughs> oh my gosh. I, I want a swatch for you guys. I'm already green. <laughs> <laughs> I love that color. Um, but I'm actually going to use this one and I've not worn any of those LA colors, but I'm going to swatch it on my hand here anyway. Ooh, I like it. So pretty. And also, you can use this right away. You don't have to wait for it to dry. There's absolutely no drying time. So like, I literally just press this and it's already ready to use. I love it. So is mine. I can apply this yeah. right now. Um, yeah. There's no wait or anything else. So and it's, it's good to go. I mean, I can't swatch the original color against it. But when I was doing right. testing, that was something I would do all the time is I would break up. Um, I'd always have two. Like, yeah. You, the, um, what do they call it? Not the placebo, but like an A-B test. So you have A and you don't destroy A and then you destroy right. B and compare the two. So I had this funny mannequin head from um, esthetician school and I was constantly putting makeup on this plastic head to <laughs> test the colors after I would try a new formula. I'm like, oh, does that one look different than that format? You know, here's the original, here's the, the fixed one. Are they any different? This poor girl's head looks like this is disgusting. Uh, anyway. So while you work on that one, my kit is, so the thing I recommend, and for you guys will work out fine because you're dealing with shades that are similar, um, is if you're going to break or fix or blend a bunch of colors, start with the lightest and then move dark. Mm. Um, because it'll save the amount of time you need for cleaning. So right now, if I had wanted to, if I want to do this one, I would actually want to probably clean out my kit. Otherwise my foundation would have a green, yeah, <laughs> a green hint to it. Um, <laughs> because I already 
um, have green in the screen and there's some green in the base. Um, yeah. So that's, that's just a little tip and tr or a trick that I've learned over the years to minimize the amount of... Um, How do you recommend cleaning it? So we get lots of questions about can you put it in the dishwasher, um, et cetera. How do you clean your kit? So my husband is actually the cleaning master of it. So um, I asked him what his tips and tricks are. First of all, it is dishwasher safe, but I don't do it that way because I feel like the, the logo could come off. Now, yeah. you guys probably don't care about that. At the end of the day, it's still going to work the same. It is dishwasher safe, but I don't, I hand wash it. So what I like to do is I like to use dish soap. And then I brought this guy out, these like cheap dish brushes. Yep. This is my go-to um, cleaning tool for the kit. And my husband's tip with this is as you're cleaning it and you're using your dish soap, always keep rinsing the brush once you get a section clean um, because the makeup will stick on here and then you're still cleaning and adding more makeup to the next part. Um, the other thing I've learned is um, you can obviously recycle all of your pans. So I often, like if I wasn't going to use this color um, or I'm out of it, I'll wash the pan and reuse it. Um, but you really have to dry them or they'll rust. Okay. Um, and that is just a little tip. So all of these are really heavy duty magnetic pans um, and they can be used over and over and over again, but they, you've got to dry them or they will rust. On you. Yeah. That is a good tip. Um, the kit comes with a magnetic palette too. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you and I are talking in stereo. <laughs> yep. So you can just pop your tins in and create your own custom palettes um, for the makeup that you fix. So I know one of the questions out there is um, how many pans can fit into the palette. Yep. Um, so you can do nine small ones. You can do four mediums or two larges. Um, but what I like to do is my favorite combination is one large, two medium, or one medium and two smalls. So then I have a foundation of blush or bronzer and then two um, eye colors all in one to go look. Um, and this I, it's my whole face in one little box usually. Yeah. <laughs> it's like so that's that's, what I do. Um, just to create like a little palette to keep in your purse. So you could, like you said, keep everything that you need for your face. You've got it and just keep it tucked away. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, if the, the thing I like is I'm constantly, even though I made this one, I may end up breaking it and making it into something else. Yeah. Um, I did a bunch last week and one of the um, blushes I made, I don't really like. The color didn't quite come out the way I thought it was going to come out. So I just, I'm going to break it and make something else out of it. It seems so taboo to break your makeup, <laughs> but it's amazing. <laughs> you don't have to spend a lot of money to repurchase things that you accidentally drop. Or like you said, if you get tired of something, you can just easily play around, be creative, mix and match. Yeah. The, the DIY side of this is really, really fun. Um, you can do lippies, um, lipsticks. So if you break a lipstick, um, 20 seconds, if you put it into a small, what I recommend is a small plastic cup, um, something that's dishwasher, uh, microwave safe, something that won't melt in the microwave, or you can use glass, but I prefer the plastic because sometimes it leaves a residue and I want to just throw the thing away afterwards with the lipstick. Um, and then what I recommend is still using these holes putting your pan into it and then pouring um, the lipstick into the pan. It then goes into the refrigerator for anywhere from 20 to 45 minutes. It should be set and then you're good to go. Um, and so you, you really could, can kind of do other things with it. Have you ever tried mixing lipstick colors? I'm sure that's something you could do. I guess you would just mix it while it's melted. 
You totally can do that. Um, I haven't done, you know, because I'm so into the powders, I haven't spent a ton of time working on the lips. So if anyone does it out there, let me know. I'd love to see all the stuff you create. I just haven't spent a ton of time um, melting down lipsticks, but it's really fun. Yeah. Especially when you get down to the flat stub. Oh, I know. And you can't really do anything with it at that point. No, you dig it out, melt it, and then set it in here. And then again, you would have your whole face if you put a lip in here. That's with, perfect. With the other powders. Oh, is your second one? It's pressing. <laughs> you oh, you're in press mode. Awesome. I'm making um, two powder tins out of the one because I had quite a bit that was broken in oh, here. Oh, nice. So I'm yeah, doing that's what's together. so fun is sometimes, I mean, especially those Mac Studio fixes. I don't know if you saw, I'm trying to remember who it was, Janelle. She is a Mac Pro makeup artist and she just depotted all of her studio fixes because they're huge. They are big. Those, yeah. those powders are just kind of ridiculous um, mm -hmm. in size, especially if you're a makeup artist, they're kind of pointless to carry around. Oh yeah. Um, so she depotted them all into our large size tin and they came out great. Really? Um, the other thing is there's a lot of people um, that are just kind of depotting for the sake of depotting to organize their kits. Yep. Consolidating. So it's really, really great to organize um, your makeup kit. Well, these are the powders. It was from oh, that cute. So it was this Makeup Forever compact that was completely broken and then there was more than what could fit in the large. So I did a large and a small. We're actually oh my God, I love it. I love it. And for those people that just joined, I had this, this Mac eyeshadow that was completely crumbled, but there wasn't a ton of it left. Um, so I broke that up and then added some of this blue to it here. And I created, if I can open it, <laughs> um, a new eyeshadow here. So it's kind of a blue green color. Um, if I wanted to, I know we were talking about glitters. Um, yep. What I like, so loose glitters on their own will not press in the kit. You would need a different type of binder um, in order to just press a loose glitter. But what you can do is as, you're, as this is sitting in the pan, you can sprinkle the glitter on the top of it and then press. And it will leave the glitter on the top and you may end up having to redo it again once you use the makeup and the glitter is off. Um, but you can add glitter to your um, pressed powders, but just not an entire pan of loose glitter. Does yeah. That sense? <laughs> you could even hopefully, mix it with hopefully that it's uh, that explanation was right. <laughs> no, it was. Oh, but you could mix, you could mix the glitter like once you've sifted the actual eyeshadow into here, you could put the loose glitter in here and mix it together. Then press. Oh, that's so a that great it's, idea. It's all mixed already. Yeah, as long as what you're pressing has some type of binding agent in it, which obviously loose glitter doesn't. So there's never a binder. In fact, sometimes you have to use glitter glue or other things to even wear it. Um, and so that's why it won't press on its own. Right. We have a question. Where can I buy a pressing pan like those pink ones? So this actually comes with the entire kit. So I'll put, I'll put it back together so you can kind of see what it looks like. But when you buy the fixie kit, you get the entire, you get everything that you need that we just used. So the top part is the press. These are the holes that you'll put um, your empty tins in once you've sifted the makeup. I'm trying to make sure everything's in the kit. <laughs> I know it's <laughs> Um, it comes with nine, right? Nine yep. pins. Three of each side. side. You get your grinding tool. Um, the top part of this, by the way, so there's like the collecting pan on the very bottom, and then this is where you'll sift the makeup through. So you get the grinding tool, um, the scraping tool, and the little brush. And the, and the binder. And the palette. So you get so everything. Basically everything. And we try yeah. to make it like a little bento box. Oh, that's, that's kind so of cute. The so <laughs> I never all, thought like, like that, but yeah. It comes together. So you can put everything back when you're done. I wanted to design something that looked cute on your on your desk or on your yeah. or 
I mean, on your vanity. Yeah, so it doesn't take up too much room. Um, is this Bitsy Makeup brand? Yes, that is the name of the brand. Um, and Jill, who is with me now, created it. How did you get the inspiration for this? Um, you know how they say um, desperation leads to invention? <laughs> I'm really overly klutzy. Um, most people that know me can attest to that. And they were actually surprised that I was able to play roller derby because I'm very klutzy. I fall a lot. But that said, I drop a lot of things too. And so I've broken so many countless powders over the years. And I had a shadow that was one of my go-to favorites. And I had broken it for a third time. I'd already replaced it that many times. And that's, that's what started me down the path. And I actually um, did the, you know, the homegrown DIY um, alcohol fix. And I, I hated the makeup afterwards. I was like, well, now I've really ruined this makeup. It looks disgusting. And yeah. it doesn't apply the same way it used to. It won't collect on my brush the way it used to. Um, so I kind of set out to find something for myself. And then it turned into something that um, I was hoping that other people would enjoy too. So that's all. Well, I'm glad that all of your trials led to this. It's a fantastic tool. So thank you for creating it. Um, we actually are doing a promotion right now. Um, Jill has these. Sorry, my dog is under here. <laughs> <laughs> you're fine. <laughs> Sorry, guys. No, you're totally fine. Um, so Jill made these really cute makeup bags, um, and she gave some of them to Camera Ready Cosmetics. So they're first come, first serve. We have a limited quantity, but if you buy the Fixie Kit at Camera Ready Cosmetics, then you will get the free makeup bag as a gift with your purchase. So if you don't have the Fixie Kit, please come buy it. You will not regret it. It saves you a lot of money in the long run. Um, when you break your favorite makeup or you just want to try mixing things without buying a bunch of samples of stuff to try it out. So yeah. Well, thank you. I love hearing that. Well, the, the, on our website for a long time, we had a money back guarantee on it yeah. and we still do. We still do. And um, we've been selling for a couple of years and I've only re sent back money to one person. Wow. And she you know, she didn't, I think at the end of the day, she really couldn't afford it. She maybe shouldn't have bought it in the first place. Um, but she was trying to press a lot of loose minerals and they don't play that well with the kit. Um, you can mix them in other products that have binders, but like bare essentials on their own don't press well um, in the kit. You can, um, and, I, and we had talked about maybe um, how to fix a cream shadow oh, yeah. or a pomade. Yeah. or an eyebrow pomade, I did some testing. Um, and what I found is if you um, break up the, the cream powder into the pan, I did not use the grinding tool because I didn't want it to, I thought it would stick in there too much. Yeah. So I just crumbled it into the base here, into the pan. And then I put a tissue on top and then I pressed it. It okay. came out fine. Okay. Now I have not tested a ton of different brands and, um, and different formulas. Um, so I'm curious if anybody else plays with it, what they find. Um, I would not add any binder to it though, because you already have a very creamy yeah. product to begin with. Um, but this press is magical. Mm -hmm. It really gives you a great amount of force into your um, pan um, for something that's really little and, and fits yeah. in your hand. Um, so if you give it enough force with this press, you should be able to get it in. And I would recommend the tissue in between so it the cream doesn't stick yeah. um, to the top of the press. I can't wait to try yeah. that. I know we were talking about it yesterday. Can you? I know. I have a, a MAC <laughs> pot that's one of those like cream pot shadows. Yeah. And it was so, it's really old. I haven't used it in forever. And it was all kind of crumbly in there, but it's still kind of creamy. Yeah. Um, and I was playing with it in my bathroom before we got on the call, and it, it worked. Awesome. So, um, okay, I see let's see. It. I don't know if there's any other questions. I, I'm going to grab my phone so I can see it a little closer. Perfect. So getting some questions, and I just want to make sure that we answer them. 
so that's um, I can't say. Uh, unfortunately I'm gonna let you read since you're getting up closer and I'm Okay, um, how much is the kit? Do you ship to Malaysia? We got a few questions about international. Yes, we do ship international. Um, and it's $46, I believe. Did I get that right? 44. I think 34. 44. 44. 44. <laughs> 44. 44, sorry. 44. Uh, okay. Let's see. If it's broken, does it mean that it's lost? It's binder, if the makeup's already broken. No. It depends on what the makeup is, but no. Okay. Just because it's broken. The thing is, is a lot of, it, in my experience, a lot of the issues around makeup breaking is in the actual packaging and not in the product itself. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, let's be honest, a lot of the cosmetic co companies really want you to replace this. Why wouldn't they, right? Yeah. Um, and I got a lot of pushback when we were starting to come up with the product that nobody would want this in a cosmetic store because they want you to buy more makeup. They don't want you to fix it. Um, yeah. So, you know, that's, that's a risk we decided to take. I'm like, you know what? I really want this and I'm still going to buy makeup. Even if I have this, I just don't want to replace the one that I just bought that's broken. Exactly. Do we have any other questions? Let's see. Keep them coming. If we don't get any, then we'll probably wrap this up soon. But <laughs> I'm happy that everyone joined and you got to see us. Thank you guys. That was really, really fun. And be sure to message over at Com Camera Ready if you have questions. Mallory is really great. And I, you can DM me too. Um, you can find me at Fixing Makeup and DM me questions also. So I really appreciate all your love and this is fun. <laughs> Thanks guys. Just to end on a positive, someone said your creation is a godsend. <laughs> I love you, whoever you are, thank you. I agree. <laughs> thank all you. Right. Thanks all guys. Right, guys. Bye. Stay safe and happy. Yes. Bye. Bye.